what I have here on the printer bed is uh, different 3D components that I'm trying to make strong. These are just test prints in PLA. I don't know if the final version, I'm going to do it in PLA or if I'll do it in something like uh, nylon with carbon fiber impregnated in it or uh, polycarbonate. There's a multitude of different options, but what I wanted to go over was how I printed these in order to make it strong. This is a design technique that I've been using to make my 3D prints stronger. So as you see these components on the bed, this is the way that they were actually printed. This was done with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and a 0.2 layer, uh, 0.2 millimeter layer height. So what I have here is a motor mount for a what I'm trying to make is an aerodynamic quadcopter. And in order to get a motor mount, which is what this part is here, to be strong and to be able to take forces in the event of a crash, which I'm hoping I don't crash this one, um, other ones have been thoroughly crash tested, is to set up the layers so that they work and put everything in tension and try to oppose all forces by 90 degrees. So what I mean by that is, if you see this piece here, the motor mount, this is set up and it printed in this orientation. This makes the layer heights go this, layer heights go this way. Now what I found uh, in previous testing before I came up with uh, this technique is this would end up splitting right along the seams here. Usually the weakest part was over here at the edges after multiple designs. So then what I came up with was the idea of taking into something like this which is printed in this orientation. And then once that is there, you can see that the cross hatching is now going to be 90 degrees to where this is. So what happens is I gain all the strengths of the forces which are going to be pulling up in this direction on the motor or down in a crash. Don't really want to crash but you know happens and then this one I gain the strength in the fact that it doesn't want to pull through so this reinforces these layers and helps prevent them from separating so what I typically do is using CA glue super glue is put them together so that they form a bond between these two layers now this is designed for a six millimeter carbon fiber rod to go through and it anchors into the back point here this motor mount piece ends up dropping right in there like that. As you can see, the hole fits right through. And then my carbon fiber rod goes in, locking everything securely in place, and then everything is fixed with super glue. Now, the challenge I have, since this is being an aero cone with a airfoil that it's going to be attached to, is I needed a cone that would allow things to still be serviceable. So I decided to print cones in two different directions. I printed one like this so that I'd be able to evaluate how well the cone looked because uh, I'm looking for texture as you can see where the supports were. It's a bit on the rough side, needs a bit of sanding, but this was going to have to be sanded anyways. Overall shape, though, is what I'm looking at. This one is a little bit distorted, so a little bit more support material would definitely help on it. This one, on the other hand, printed in the same direction as this piece, actually came out pretty good. Uh, of course, at the tip, we got a bit of melting, which is not to be unexpected. This is just a single piece, so if I was going to be printing... Uh, this for real, I would end up doing multiple pieces or have a sacrificial piece to allow for longer cooling time in between the layer heights up here. So this piece right here ends up attaching and I have little recesses in here for the motor mount to help prevent it from rotating during assembly. Is it attaches right like that. And then I have my, this is a small piece of the wing that's going to end up going over this spar. This wing will actually be, you know, probably coming out to about here where it'll attach to the fuselage of the ship. So I have the six millimeter hole that goes right in through here. And there you can see how the final item is going to end up looking. 
Uh, like I said, this is just a test print, so I'm just doing this for fitment and testing. So the idea was I wanted this to still be serviceable since the screws for the motor are going to be down here. So what I was thinking is using CA glue and just permanently attach these two pieces together and then maybe use a dab of glue on this once it's attached just to hold it because it doesn't take much to hold it. There's no real forces at play on it here. Uh, so there's not a whole lot to worry about. This is actually the shape of a NACA 0024 airfoil that I imported and revolved the direction or revolved in uh, Fusion 360. This is a NACA 0015 airfoil sh airfoil shape, and it too was just brought in. I drew it up and then just extruded it in Fusion 360. So this piece here is a hole going down to this passage. This is to pass the motor wires through. So once this is assembled, let me do that quickly here. So once everything's together like that, you still have to deal with motor wires. So even though the motor is mounted here, you don't want to keep the wires outside. You want the wires to run inside. So what I did is I created a relief in here so that I can get the wires for my motor to feed inside the airfoil. It's a bit of tight of a fit, but uh, I should be able to work that. Oh. Of course, it helps if I can use two hands versus just trying to do it single-handed. Oh, we're going to turn this into struggle him. Watch to feed the wires into the mount. Anyways, there you go, you get the general idea of where this is going. So the motor goes here. We have our full cone. And then we have the wires, which will be running there. And I'm thinking about printing a cover to go over the top of that as well, or might just put tape around it, heat shrink tubing. Not exactly sure what I'm going to do with those wires yet, but this gives you the general idea of how I'm going to be laying this design out and kind of a picture of what it's going to look like, uh, at least on the motor side with the, the aeropods and I'll probably end up designing some sort of nose cone for it as well to match this. And I'll have to come up with some sort of cowling or something as this does not, it's a few, it's like two and a half millimeters in each side sticking out from the motor. If that's visible in screen there, it's a little tough to tell. So I'll end up having to build up a little wall here and round it off with an airfoil to help prevent uh, this from being a blunt force against the stream because I want to try and keep the airflow as smooth as I can even though this is post prop. Having a blunt surface is just not a good idea. Anyways, that's all I got for now. I'll be uh, posting more as the design progresses.